Now, let's look at some continuous variables using histograms and plots. For a basic histogram, you call function hist with a variable of interest, in this case, interest rate. You can use the arguments main and xlab for nicer labels. The frequencies for the variable of interest are shown on the y-axis. Here, you can see that all loans had an interest rate over 5% and very few loans had an interest rate higher than 20%. Let's have a look at the histogram of annual income. We notice that we get a strange result here, with seemingly just one big bar. Storing the histogram in hist underscore income and using dollar sign breaks, we get information on the location of the histogram breaks. In order to get a clear idea on the data structure, you can change the number of breaks using the breaks argument, such that you get a more intuitive plot. This can be done by choosing a number that seems more appropriate, or use a rule of thumb, such as the square root of the number of observations in the dataset. This results in a much longer vector, vector of breaks. However, the result still doesn't look very nice here, with a lot of blank space. The x-axis of the histogram automatically ranges from the smallest observed value to the largest one. Let us look at a scatter plot to see what is going on. In this plot, the annual income is shown on the y-axis and the observations index number is shown on the x-axis. We see that there is one huge salary of $6 million, where none of the others is bigger than around $2 million. We consider this an outlier. In statistics, an outlier is an observation that is abnormally distant from other values. But when is a distance abnormal? In general, data scientists will use their expert judgment, rules of thumb, or a combination of both. Expert judgment could be used if the data scientist is considered an expert in the domain of credit risk modeling. He can then judge that an annual wage above, let's say, $3 million must be an error and should be deleted from the dataset. If a data scientist wants to rely on a rule of thumb, he could delete all values that are bigger or smaller than 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is the range between the first and third quartiles of the variable's distribution. As outliers in the negative range did not occur here, we only delete ones in the positive range. After deleting outliers, you get the following results. These histograms are more informative than the initial ones, including the outliers, especially the histogram that was constructed using the rule of thumb. Note that quite some observations were deleted using this rule of thumb. Even if you don't plan to actually leave out these outliers in your analysis, it might still be useful to delete them temporarily when visualizing the data. Let's conclude by looking at a bivariate plot. When you include a second variable in the plot function, the first argument will be plotted on the x-axis and the second argument on the y-axis. A bivariate plot for employment length and annual income is shown here. Having a look at bivariate plots can be interesting to track bivariate outliers, which are outliers on two dimensions of the data. For the combination plotted here, we only see an outlier on the scale of annual income and not for employment length. Now, let's try to make some plots and histograms ourselves.